Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Enfield. I'm Mike Tippo. It's good to have you with us. Well, someone told me, I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I understand there's an election coming up here pretty soon. Well, we've got David Wallow with us today. He's a registrar of voters here in town. And is that really true, Dave? We've got an election coming? It looks like uh, if, if you can't miss it with all the TV, radio, oh. newspaper ads, that, that, and, and yard signs yeah. and billboards. Yeah. I think we have an election coming. And we get those nice full-color brochures that are coming out. <laughs> They've got to be expensive to print something like that. I would think that it costs a few dollars a piece to put a, 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 pr a multiple color yeah. uh, postcard right. out to folks. Yeah. I like those because at, at my convenience or at my leisure, I can sit down and read those. I find them to be one of the better ways of getting information. Don't call me. <laughs> We've talked about this before, but right. I, I'm not sure if that doesn't hurt candidates after a while. Well, e each candidate running for office has to decide which method of, of getting their information and their name out to the people works best. Uh, in, a, in a presidential election, I'm going to suspect it's, it's television yeah. and, and radio. Uh, there may be a few mailers, but you might see a lot less of that. Yard signs are not as significant in terms of yeah. memory and, and you know, what, what people's uh, goals are and what they stand for. Uh, but locally, um, you've got a couple of state, you've got the two state representative right. seats up, you've got a state senate seat. Yep. Um, you might see more from those candidates uh, for their, uh, with mailers, yeah. um, yard signs, things I like gotta, that. I got to believe that the best bang for the buck, I know it's tedious, I know it's difficult, but that fellow or that woman knocking on your door and saying, hey, this is who I am and I'm running for office. And I, you know, want to talk to you a little bit about what you want from your fill-in-the-blank state rep or council member. I just think those are very, very helpful. And people that I talk to that have done it uh, feel that it, it does pay off. People Re say, I don't even know you. And then when they get a chance to start talking, say, hey, this is somebody I, I might be interested in voting for. It's a very interesting process. I, I once ran for a local office about 10 years ago mm -hmm. and, and found uh, I spent th three or four months walking door to door uh, and uh, introducing myself to people. People had the opportunity to ask, what do you stand for? What are you going to do if elected? And, and they all, all gives them an opportunity to decide which candidate they, that stands best for the things that they believe in, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to um, a radio ad or, or some other form of marketing. Uh, yes, retail politics does work. Um, for local candidates. I was going to say, you can't do that in Hartford or Bridgeport. Governor, no, there are certain offices where, where you have to rely on mass media. Yeah, yeah. And, and debates and, and rallies and things of that yeah, nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when is the election? What's the date so we can get that in people's yeah. minds? It's Tuesday, November 6, 2012. Okay. Can you still register to vote at this point? We're, we're taping this on the 27th of September. Yeah. So people will know. Great. Yeah, it's, and I should mention the hours of voting are 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay. okay. Uh, people can register today. They can register. There are deadline dates for every election for registering, and people ought to be aware of that. And that's been in Connecticut statute for 100 years. The deadlines sometimes change when some minor modifications are made, but, but typically they're, they're steadfast to allow the elections officials to prepare right. for election day. The list of registered voters has to be in place by a certain date right. with a few exceptions. And, and the reason why the list has to be in place is to ensure the integrity of the voting, right. that we have people whose names are on people who come to the election site to vote are registered voters. So that's why there's a timeline. Uh, for this year's election, Tuesday, October 23rd is a key date. That is the last date for which a person can register to vote by mailing in a, re a voter registration form. Now, how do they do that? Vote, vote, people can mail in by going to uh, the Town of Enfield website, the Registrar Voters webpage, and printing off a, a form. And they, they fill it out, sign it, and they mail it in to the Town Hall, to, to, to the Registrar's office at 820 Enfield Street, Town Hall. 
um, and that is then entered into the, their names are entered into the system and they get a confirmation letter they do absolutely you want to carry that with you I would imagine uh, if, <coughs> if you're registering near the end of the deadline you might want to but yeah. but typically we the lists are pretty much set for those who have been registering for the past four or five months their names are on on our database for sure okay so but the the other part about this uh, de deadline is there are exceptions to the rule we're not the only the registrar's offices in the state of Connecticut are not the only official places where you can register Department of Motor Vehicles is one the Secretary of State's office is another I believe that uh, social service agencies certain designated are, are designated agencies where people can fill out voter registration cards and they are considered in person even mm -hmm. if the form doesn't get to our office until after the deadline of October 23rd and how late can they do that to go to the registry of motor vehicles for instance well up until the 23rd of October okay so, but but we may not get their form until four or five days later because the the transmittal of the of the documents takes a few days the other the other deadline is is the next Tuesday Tuesday October 30th that is the last day in which a person can register in person at okay. one of these sites okay. uh, including our office the t uh, and I should mention the town clerk's office because the town clerk is an official place where you can register to vote mm -hmm. so between October 23rd and October 30th you can come into your town clerk's office, secretary of state's office. You, the DMV is still an official place, again, for in person, okay? That's up till October 30th. That's correct. And that on that day, all registrars of voters' offices in the state of Connecticut, 169 places, are, will be open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m to okay. register people to vote that's in addition to their local town clerk's offices at their town halls okay you have to go to the town clerk or the registrar of motor vehicles in your town if no no you're use one of those believe it or not I can go to East Windsor and register them? you can uh, you can register to vote at any registrars of voters office in the state of Connecticut on Tuesday October 30th you may live here you're in New London you've never registered to vote you go to their city hall you find the registrar voters office at five o'clock you register it'll be incumbent upon that registrar's office to mail us yeah. the form but that is considered in-person registration you can not electronically transfer that information on no. the internet no uh, not permissible you think it will be down the road it there is a, a uh, the secretary of the state's office is investigating the ability to register to vote online uh, something that w would have to involve changing state law however mm -hmm. because sure. our office is required to have a card a piece of paper with all the pertinent information and the voter's signature on it okay ha and then right now there's no that legally an elect there's not a electronic signatures are not legal yeah. they would have to change state law okay. and they would have to to ident identify a way to get the form to the appropriate registrar's office because we maintain 169 separate databases well couldn't it just be the the town's name Enfield mm -hmm. registrar of voters and have a website set up by the state that that would you know ideally ideally there. that's where you want to go yeah but to get there uh, a, a number of state law sections of state sure. voter election law have to be changed yeah, yeah. Um, because uh, unfortunately government local and state government requires paperwork as evidence yeah and absent evidence you could lead to to uh, unforeseen circumstances and there's also the question registering to vote on a website mm -hmm. there have to be significant firewalls and and antivirus protections put up which could most likely be done to ensure the integrity of uh, what's being done 
but you you also introduce into the voter database if you if someone can put a virus onto yeah. a form yeah. and sh could could destroy the statewide database yeah. and I, yeah. I believe that that is one of the concerns yeah. Yeah. that that the Secretary of State's office would yeah. have yeah. I mean if, if our data if our electronic database was wiped out all we have to go back are on the cards there's That's no right. other proof right. that you're a registered voter. Yeah, yeah, good point. So, it, it, not that it can't be done, because we do all our banking electronically. Yeah. We buy sporting event tickets and sure. theater tickets electronically. Airline. We buy airline tickets electronically. The technology exists. It's just a matter of government wanting to uh, put in place that system. Yeah. Uh, it's government is probably the last entity to, to go to what we call more efficient yeah. means of registering to vote. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be be able to be done. I mean, United Airlines is not going to allow all of their records of res reservations and seat assignments and meal <laughs> assignments that somebody can get in there and destroy. You can imagine what that would do to an airline in one day. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I believe that the, the those entities, those businesses impl have put up significant safeguard levels layers of safeguards sure. so that yeah. their information databases are secure and protected from from breaches yeah I believe that has been the key concern right uh, but on the other hand voter registration information the list of who's a registered voter is public information yeah not their social security number not their driver's license right. But the, the, the person's name and street address is public information. So we already have it. We have that already, yeah. Correct. Um, can you tell me, my neighbor, can you tell me his party affiliation and how many times he's voted in like the last six years? We, the registrars have the ability on an internal system to do that. They do. Okay. Correct. We, when we can look up a single voter's voter history. Um, only the fact that he voted, not who he voted for. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Or the, which elections a person voted in. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, you told me earlier when we were talking informally beforehand that you do not have to be a registered. Let me make sure I get this right. <laughs> you do not have to be a registered voter to vote for president and vice president of the United States. That is correct. I never heard this before. It's it's a new law. Uh, Congress put into place, and it was, it, you know, somewhere in the between 2002 and 2004. Uh, I, and I, I'm, I'm not exactly correct, but I believe it was part of the Help America Voting Act law that got passed at at that time, 2002, 2003. Now, what does a person have to do? Well, no, for to to vote at a regular voting site. In any of the 169 cities and towns, or here in Enfield, one must be a registered voter. Right. And there's a ballot for registered voters. Okay. okay. And there are safeguards and systems to, to ensure that the person showing up is actually that person. Then we have a, we've been, the, the federal government, the Congress, introduced something else. And that would allow a person who resides in Enfield but who has never, who has not ever registered to vote, to vote for President of the United States on Election Day. It's a unique, um, it's a uniqueness to 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 a presidential election only. Now, walk me through this. Do they go to the regular the the, the election site that the person next door to them will be going to? No. Where not, do they have to well, go? The first step is they have to visit town clerk's office. Okay. Town clerk has to to investigate and, and be given information that, that demonstrates the person actually lives here in the town of Enfield. And the town clerk handles whatever identification is required by law. Then that person will be going, once they've passed the, the identification test, they'll be going to fill out paperwork in the council chambers. And we'll have a team of workers there, we'll have an elections moderator, we'll have a, a ballot will have a scanner and the person will then fill out paperwork uh, and after filling out the appropriate paperwork and signing names and providing some identification will then be given a presidential ballot. They'll fill it out and put it in the scanner. 
David, wouldn't it be a lot easier for these people just to register to vote? It would seem so on the surface, that, that people have every opportunity to register to vote because mm -hmm. the Secretary of State's website has a registration form, our town has a voter registration form. When you're going to, um, say, town hall to pay a property tax in August, right. you can go to the town clerks or our, if we're uh, open, our office and register to vote. There are many, many opportunities to register to vote. It's, it's, but it, it's incumbent upon the person to want to register, and. You know, it's I, I've saw um, I've seen it on election day. People will show up, yeah, and ask us at our office, "Is it too late to register to vote?" And uh, it's there are deadlines for registering, right? But you have literally a year yep. between elections, so the and because we do, we accept mail in forms that you can get from your home computer, yeah, on a Saturday or Sunday, there there. There's really no excuse for not registering the vote. Right. But you know, and again, it's. But we we sometimes get one or two or three people that that you know show up and ask to register yeah. on election day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what elections do we have in this? Uh, what offices <laughs> are we running for? Okay. Um, we have uh, President of the United States. We have U.S. Senate. We have Congress. Uh, second congressional district. We will have state senate. That's the seventh senatorial district. Yep. And we have, and all voters will be voting on those positions. The, the, there's one distinction. Half of Enfield will be voting for a House 58 General Assembly candidate, and half of Enfield will be voting for a House 59 General Assembly candidate. So we have two distinct ballot types okay. for this election. And the ballots are assigned to the voting sites right. for that General Assembly district. Okay. Uh, do we have any voting sites that there will be people going there, some for the 58th and some for the 59th, or is it all? No, what, what, we've, what we've done is just this past, a month, within the past month, Carol Sensky and I went through municipal redistricting and mm -hmm. that is we realigned the municipal district boundaries to fit general assembly 58 and 59 okay. allowing us to open up henry barnard fermi mm -hmm. along with jfk and enfield high mm -hmm. now people will be ass assigned to one of those four sites and they're assigned based on whether or not they live in general assembly 58 mm -hmm. or 59. Now most people have not changed. Right. But we know that there are at least 3,500 households that were changed by the, the Connecticut General Assembly. They are moved into fift House 58. How would they know which one? They're going to get a postcard. When will they get that? Uh, the week of October 22nd. Postcards will be going out to 19,000 households. We're going to we're we're alerting people who are registering now to look for the postcard, yep. and we would hope when we talk with the council, in, in during the month of October that we we've also uh, we will through those venues be alerting people to look for the postcard. The postcard will designate the place you are supposed to vote now and for the next ten years. Great. It is Great. hold on okay. to that postcard. It's not going to change right. until right. the next federally mandated redistricting in 2022 or, okay. so, or something like that. Will uh, you still be the registrar of voters then? I Dave? don't know if I'll still be alive in 2022. <laughs> I know. There are no guarantees there in life, the, all the, nothing that. taxes. Um, Is there somewhere online you can, you can look at a map? Not yet. Well, okay. not yet. Okay. Uh, what we're, we're doing is the map that's on the town website yep. differentiates between what is General Assembly 58 and 59. It's in two colors, pink and blue. Okay. Because those are the two legal voting districts for this, this election. Uh -huh. What you don't see on the map is how we have subdivided it mm. to fit an equal amount of, roughly an equal amount of voters at each of four sites. Okay. And where, what are those four sites? The four sites will be um, Enfield High, 
Henry Barnard Elementary. Oh, let me, and Field yeah. High is on Enfield Street. Right. Henry Barnard Elementary is on Shaker Road. Yeah. Fermi High School is on North Maple Street. And then JFK Middle School is on Raffia Road. How about handicap parking? Is it available at any of those locations? All four sites, because they are government buildings, have designated handicap spots. We cannot change the designated spots because they're set there through whatever legal procedures the police and the town and, and, and the state designate, how they designate legal handicap spots. What we do for a couple of sites um, is we have worked with the, the local fire marshals of the different fire districts for that election day to set up temporary handicap parking at Enfield High it's right next to the curb under the portico beautiful and we've been doing that's that really now good. for three yeah. elections we put up these temporary handicap signs and unless there's a fire and the fire engines come you know people are allowed to 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 park there temporarily yep. Yep. and we've been doing that now for three elections it's so that senior citizens can park at the curb and walk to the cafeteria at Enfield High. That's great. Now, we've been asked to do more, but we, we've, we've, we've put the car as close to the voting room as is legally possible. Mm -hmm. at, at Barnard, um, we, we use the temporary handicap signs that are close to the door, uh, to the main door. Mm -hmm. uh, at John F. Kennedy Middle School, there are eight to 10 handicap parking spaces uh, not more than a hundred feet from the the entrance to the building, so that uh, we w and we open the door there for so that that uh, is a very close place. Yep. But at JFK, we will also put up some of the temporary handicap parking stanchions uh, placards on the sidewalk just to the east of the entrance to handicap parking. Okay. toward the rear of the building uh, and then at Fermi High we do we do something similar to Enfield High we put in the temporary handicap signs in the rotary or circle by the main entrance yep. door and uh, because the official handicap signs are a little farther away we've mm -hmm. done that and we've done that successfully now That's great. Um, for you know a couple of elections and and it's worked out we we've added signage we've added space for for temporary handicap okay. what well, but here's the a question that's come up time and again and it's primarily one site Enfield High we, we we don't hear concerns or complaints other than Enfield High uh, my 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 relatives infirmed can't walk okay there are two ways to do this we urge people who ha have a legal handicap to vote absentee Let's that is why we that. have that's yeah. why we have absentee voting that's something we haven't covered let's get yeah. into that when do people have to register for an absentee ballot or ah, an absentee the, ballot? the town clerks in 169 cities and towns are legally responsible for absentee voting absentee ballot applications and the ballots themselves the applications are available online on the town website under the town clerks web page one can download it print it off and mail it or hand deliver it to the town clerk and we emphasize town clerk right uh, we get numerous calls we get them every day about handicap ballots you there are two it's a two-step process you must fill out the application and the ballots are not legally available until the first Friday in October hmm. so there's no ballot for okay. absentee voters until that first Friday that's that's 31 days or 30 days before the election so there, there's a deadline uh, there's a, a legal requirement those ballots are being designed now only because of a certain court case that just mm -hmm. ended two days ago two days ago now can I take my neighbor who's, who's handicapped can I take their absentee request to town yes hall? you may you can you can bring the form okay. to town hall um, again a town clerk staff handles everything to do with absentee applications and the ballots themselves yeah now it is an interest important to note um, <coughs> that 
the voter themselves can go to the town clerk's office Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., fill out the application, show their, you know, fill it out mm -hmm. and, and, and hand it. If it's after Friday, October, or beginning Friday, October 5th, the ballot, a ballot can be filled out right then and there. Right then and there. We encourage all, all of our election workers to, to vote absentee. Yeah. And we, again, we encourage anyone who is infirmed, typically handicapped, does not go out and drive a car right. and go to the supermarket. Yep. I mean, this, these are, people have the legal ability to use the absentee voting system. Okay, how about a fellow that's going to be on a trip traveling for business? If He's someone not handicapped not, by any means. If someone is out of town on election day, they have the ability, they have the legal right to to fill out the application, get the ballot, and then f and then vote by absentee ballot. So if you come in on October 5th or later, you can make it a one-stop shopping, fill out the application, it'll hand you a ballot Correct. at that time. Correct. Correct. You could then fill it out right then and there and, and Correct. give it to the clerk? Correct. Okay. I believe up until 5 p.m. on October 5th. Up until 5 p.m. That's a close of business. Okay, so you can't get a ballot after October 5th. Not an absentee. That okay. is correct, because right. election day is the next day. Right, right. No. You can go right up to that day. Correct. So someone can't walk in on election day and say, hey, I'm here. Correct. It's too late. And, and again, we encourage. Now, we I should point out that we do offer what's known as curbside voting. Our, if someone drives up, someone drives someone up and parks in a handicapped spot and says, my husband, daughter, friend, neighbor, sister can't walk in or they have difficulty, the person who's driven them there can bring in their identification wow. to, to the moderator. The yeah. moderator will have the checker review and check off the name. Right. And then two election workers, one of each party, will go out with a ballot in a privacy sleeve and a little flare pen and bring it to that voter. Wow. And um, we have done periodic curbside voting. Okay. I think a minute ago we made a mistake on a date. Okay. The election is what day? Tuesday, November 6th. What's the last day you can get an absentee ballot? Oh, you, the last day you can vote absentee right. is Monday, November 5th. Okay, all right. I think we missed. Mis yes, yeah, correct. That. The the absentee, um, yeah. The the absentee ballot balloting the uh, filling on actual ballot is available beginning the first Friday in October. Right, that's where I think for we got thirty one off. for thirty one days. Right. So it's okay. the fifth to the fifth. Okay, all right, good. But you can't. You cannot do an absentee ballot on the sixth. Right, well, obviously we are in town. Correct. Uh, we did, I think we've t talked about enough. Oh, let's, we've done this before, but it, it's important that people realize it. Got a young fellow that registered to vote in Enfield five years ago. Mm-hmm. He moved to Ellington. Mm-hmm. He registered to vote in Ellington. Yes. He just came back to Enfield. Yes. Were he registered here once before? Is he all set? No. Okay. When, when a person registers in a, uh, another town in the state of Connecticut, they are automatically removed from the Enfield voter registration list. And it's, uh, each town is a separate voting entity, a separate right. list. It does not apply across the state of Connecticut. Um, so if you are if l registered to vote in one of the other towns and you've just moved back into town, you're going to have to go back to that town to vote okay. because that's the list you're on. Okay. Once you've passed the deadline dates, so you have time to r register in the new town. Mm -hmm. um, and we all talk a little about uh, the registration, and be, you know, kind of we're going to encounter on election day people coming in saying, for example, JFK Middle School, and they have moved into the into onto a street, Raffia Road. Yep. in the past six months or three months, but they've never come to the registrar voters office to change their legal address. Right. 
their their residential address what the this is what the person's going to encounter they're not going to be on the list of voters at JFK they're not going to be on that street if they have not told us and filled out a change of address form what they'll go through is they're gonna have to show their ID the moderator will take them aside <clears throat> the moderator will call have someone on their staff call to the voting site where they would have voted in a previous election okay. it's going to take time it's then confirmed by the moderator at the other site let's say Fermi uh, not Fermi let's, let's say Barnard School it's that the name is on Barnard School the moderator will be will then at Barnard School will delete the person's name from the street at Barnard School mm -hmm. the moderator at JFK will add the person because they've shown that ID that they now live at Raffia Road mm -hmm. and add them to the list they'll give them a ballot and a vote the change will be made internally in our computer system following the election but I want to point out that we will probably encounter hundreds will of people really that have not notified or, or legally changed their voter registration address here in Enfield even though they still reside in Enfield. Yeah. Now, that's not the Ellington Enfield example. That is Enfield to Enfield. Yeah. We do we do get some change of address forms through DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles. We get a weekly change and we try and keep up with them, but there are times where a person has not gone to DMV yeah. Yeah. because their license has not expired mm -hmm. and they put a sticker on the back and we don't get a ch necessarily a change of address oh. on from that. Yeah, yeah. And so, so we have to make the change on election day. It leads to long lines mm -hmm. and waiting. But that is because people need to be sure that when they move, they fill out the form that's on our web page and, and, and do that. There's going to be another category person showing up on election day. And that may be a person who thought they're registered to vote. Maybe they're registered 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and moved out of town and came back. Yeah. When we would have deleted them from the system because we got a change of address form, uh, or not change of address, we get, uh, we'd go through a system every year of canvassing who's moved out of town, out of the state. How do you do that? Uh, that is a, a process. We, we get the information from the U.S. Postal Service, huh? uh, people that have known to have moved, changed address, and we then send out letters. Typically, every year we send out between 1,000 and 1,500 letters asking people to verify whether or not they've actually moved. And those who come back, who have not, those whose forms we get back, mm -hmm. we make the changes. Those who have not indicated to us they've ch moved, they go into what's known as an inactive voter list. But, um, you know, th 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 that is another system we, we look at. Um, so that that is part of what's going to happen on election day people are going to show up and believe they are they could the registered voters mm. they had moved and again out of state they were deleted and they come back and they think they're a registered voter when they're not okay somebody moved from he's mentioned raffia yep. road they moved from six raffia road to 16 raffia road uh -huh. are they going to have a problem going no they they again we would make the change of address on the checker book at the voting site what we're doing is it just is going to sl it slows down the process right. we want to m make people aware that because of all these instances for those who have not changed who have not moved they're going to go and check in rapidly right. uh, get their ballot vote and, and, and go on to their next uh, task or, or wherever they're going after voting but for those who who have made address uh, who have moved, um, uh, we, we're gonna they're gonna have to work with us. Now, what we offer and, and something people I don't know on election day is something called a provisional ballot. If someone comes in and says I'm a registered voter, and their name is not on any checker list, their name is not on the statewide database, we can't find a voter card in our files they will still be given the opportunity to vote with a ballot called a provisional ballot. We, we don't turn anyone away on a federal election. They, they will have to fill out paperwork with the moderator. They will get the ballot that looks like 
the ballot that goes through the scanner, but it's a photocopy. It's not, it does not go through mm -hmm. the scanner. And they will fill out their candidate choices, put it in an envelope, sign the, 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 this, this um, uh, envelope. It'll be sealed. All provisional ballots come back to the registrar voters after election is over. The registrars meet within seven days of an election, six or seven days, and open all of, well, they research whether or not the person could have been restored to the active voter list. And we've done that in 2010, we've done it in, two, we've done it in 2008, we'll do it again in 2012. How many of those will you get, Dave? We will probably have, on a presidential election, um, between 20 and 30 provisional ballots townwide. Uh, we anticipate that. You do? We, we may have more, yeah. uh, but, but the provisional ballot looks like the real ballot. You get the choices. It's just that the registrars, by law, must verify that you can be put back on an active voter list because you're not on any voter list. And there are some instances where we, we've done that. Okay. That person would have had to show you ID. some ID. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Connecticut. Absolutely. If That's they correct. Answer, well, I just moved from Summers. Yes. I haven't changed my license yet. Correct. Will you still give them a provisional ballot? The, they would have... Believe it or not, on a federal election, if someone has just moved and registered, well, assuming they've registered. No, this guy hasn't. If they've not registered in Enfield, then they'd have to go back to Summers to vote. Oh, even though they no longer live in Summers. Correct. But they're on the voter list. Unless they have been deleted from yep. the Summers right. list, right. they can go back and vote in Summers. I got you. Okay. Yes. Right. How many registered voters do we have in Enfield? We have approximately 24,500 registered voters. That's good. That number fluctuates daily. We have new voters. Sure. We have the list of people who move out of town. We have deceased. Yeah. So this is, the number has been in the 24,500 range now for almost a year. Uh, back in the presidential election of 2008, I believe the number went as high as 27,000. Wow, wow. And, and uh, we anticipate a turnout between 70 and 75 percent of registered voters. That is the historical norm. For presidential election? Presidential election. election. It's the highest. And, and we, we've ordered enough ballots to accommodate, you know, yeah. how do you, more than that. How do you, we had that fiasco, was it Bridgeport that ran out of ballots? Bridgeport is a, is kind of unique to the cities not the towns in 53 of the towns there's one voting site mm. and one type of ballot yeah in Enfield while we have four sites we only have two, two. types of ballots yeah. and we order enough ballots to accommodate those four sites those two different types of ballots mm -hmm. uh, and we have an overage well beyond what we what is the historical norm right in a city like Bridgeport or Hartford or New Haven, those entities tend to split up their voting into 20 or 30 voting sites. And unique to the cities, they may have five different general assembly districts or three different senatorial districts. Yeah. Yeah. We have one senatorial district and two general assemblies, so right. it's very easy for us in terms of printing a ballot that's applicable for our sites. Right. In Bridgeport, I believe they had, may they still have, 30 sites. Now, I do not know how many different types of ballots they have to yeah. buy. Yeah. And the Secretary of State um, has, has, has asks every city and town to, to notify them in advance of election how many ballots they're going to vote going to purchase mm -hmm. we I mean, it's divided by general assembly district now in Bridgeport you might have again uh, let's say you have three let's say four different five different general assembly districts and you have 30 sites huh. so do the math yeah. you get there they have to figure out how many ballots to order for each of the five different types of general assembly districts mm which is split into five sites. 
So one of the, one of the 30 sites may have an, an outpouring of voters. Well, the, the registrars, as we do, we always keep a, a, a reserve supply of ballots that we can rush to a site immediately. So we, we, we again, as part of our, our surplus overage. Yeah. I don't know how the cities and towns have to plan a little bit differently. If they reduce their number of sites, maybe if they had one site per general assembly district or two, it would be easier to sure. manage the number of ballots. And yep. that is what I believe the issue was in Bridgeport. Now there is a pr the moderator at that voting site. If they're trained well and they understand it, they can go to the copy machine and they can photocopy the ballots. Okay. So there should have been no excuse okay. at any site. Yeah. Yeah. We train all our moderators. They work with the custodians yep. and the school administrators. Yep. They can go to a photocopier. Yep. We can go to a photocopier. Yep. We can bring photocopied ballots. They can make them. All they have to do is be watching how many ba how many ballots have to give are out left. That last ballot. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it's it's very it's it's a, it's, a, it's very easy to manage if you have properly trained workers. Yeah. I believe that was one of the issues in okay. Bridgeport. Yeah. So we we don't have that problem here in right. Enfield. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you people. I voted JFK, and they always seem to be very efficient. The, they they the, they're they're probably know. there's still some uh, anxiety and agita behind the scenes, but sure, they sure. Our, our election workers because they are properly trained, yeah. uh, are calm the, yep. to handle all yeah. sorts of situations. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Oh, I, I should mention the 75 foot sign barriers and political campaign. Right. Most candidates, locals, understand yep. the law. Right. But the law is that no political paraphernalia, no candidates, no campaigning, can take place within 75 feet of the entry door to the building. And our moderators count out 75 feet and put out these stakes and these signs and and we ask the the candidates or their volunteers to honor those right. signs um, and if there's an issue the moderator can you know go out there or get the police to, to make them move outside right. the 75 foot barrier typically we do not have an issue but again yeah. on, on this kind of election there could be volunteers for candidates that are not from the town yeah. of Enfield yeah. and do not understand Election, that's state state of Connecticut election right. law, but don't understand state election law. Right. Um, also, a change in the law. Um, a person who's going to vote cannot come into the voting room with the name of the candidate or political paraphernalia yep. on their body. Yep. So a, a Smith for Congress shirt. Right must either be, and a moderator will knows this, will either, the person will either be asked to take off the shirt right. or cover it. Right. You can do right. either one. Right. They will not be asked to leave the voting site unless they fail to cover. But th th that is not allowed. So the name of the candidate on, on political paraphernalia uh, buttons right. have to be covered up when voting. I've got to <laughs> tell you, <laughs> we've had this conversation before about that but I will bet you dollars to donuts that on election, the day after the election, on the Hartford Current, there's going to be a picture of a candidate with a button with his name on it or her name on it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they can you know, outside the 75 no, foot this barrier. Is in, this is in the, 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 oh. the voting area. You know, you always get that picture of the guy turning <laughs> away from, the, you know, the, yes. and there it is. You yeah. know. It's, uh, sure. And, and I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. Uh, I don't agree with the idea that I can't have a button on that says Smith for Congress. I believe think it or not, believe it or not, that was a change. Complaints. I'm not sure which, which, who brought the complaints, but it was brought before the General Assembly back in, I believe, 2011. And the law was changed to not allow names not buttons the buttons political buttons political shirts were always forbidden from the voting room but now it's like if you have a, a, I don't know a, a name of the candidate on something other than a political shirt 
Uh, it could be uh, Smith, uh, S Smith signs, and Mr. Smith is running for office. Uh, or or uh, McDonald, Mr. McDonald, <laughs> yeah. and I have a McDonald's shirt because I'm an employee of McDonald's. Oh, the, those are the kinds of yeah. things where employee shirts right. with the name of the entity cannot be worn in the voting room as well. And again, that was a change in the 2000. If that person is running for office, or if that person's running for okay. office, Miss McDonald's not running this year. Though. We don't think so. Okay. But with uh, Mike, because of the um, there was a, a Supreme Connecticut Supreme Court ruling yesterday morning, mm -hmm. um, and it has been decided in a unanimous vote that for the next three years, including this November's election, Republican candidates will have the top line. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Supreme Court reaffirmed that uh, in the previous gubernatorial election, the Republican candidate garnered the most votes of any gubernatorial candidate for that party. Um, although the Secretary of State had tried to interpret the law differently, it was determined by the Supreme Court that the law is the law, and, and as, as specified, has been in place now for decades. Yeah. Uh, and, and so beginning this November um, and, and for the next three Novembers, uh, the Republi Republican candidates will garner the top line, Democratic will be two. Beyond that, I could not describe to you the ballot order by political party yet that has got to be, that is going to be determined by the Secretary of State's office this week. Everything, the, the order of the names on ballot has been held up statewide pending this Supreme Court decision. But in case, and Amon mentioned to the audience because we've had inquiries about looking at a sample ballot. Yeah, yeah. The Secretary of the State's staff certifies names on ballots for the 169 cities and towns, not the local registrars. Wow. The Secretary of State's office then authorizes to the town clerks the printing of ballots. Okay. So, so it's this is not a municipal election. We do not have control over names on ballots or the order. But we, we do know that uh, the, the Secretary of State's office should be releasing information to town clerks within the next few days good. to allow them to begin to order ballots. Okay. Very good. Have we missed anything? Anything else you want I, to say? Mike, uh, there, are, there are always questions that come up on Election Day, and, and I'm, it's... Uh, I'm sure that we'll look back at this presidential election and come up with some, some issues that we can discuss in future ETV sure. shows. All right, sounds good. <laughs> All right, very good, David. Thanks thank a lot for coming in. We appreciate it. I want to thank Kevin Sullivan, our videographer and producer and director and man about town. Thank you very much, Kev. I hope uh, you've learned something today. There's so many twists and turns in uh, elections. Uh, and it seems complicated, but if you just take your time and go through it, it uh, it's going to be okay. We're going to have a good election. I hope David's wrong and, and the 70 to 75 percent of registered voters come out. I hope 99.9 .9 percent of us come out and vote. This is a real important thing, uh, the right to vote. And we need to maintain that. And one good way is to show the politicians that we mean it and we come out and we vote. Uh, hope to see you again soon. Have a great uh, week and a happy October.